Hey boys and girls, today it's about time I got the wiring sorted. As you saw in my last video, I've got far too much danger going on under the dash. So I am going to start on my custom fuse panel and relay panel stuff. So that's what we'll be doing today and also we will be updating the map of world domination. So if you've not got your name in the comment section and your location, then do it now. It's going to be too late, we'll do that in the next update, but uh, that's what we're doing today, so let's go on with it. I made this fuse panel, relay panel, for my last project, and it's, it was very specifically designed with hinges. It was going to sit under the dash, and then when I needed it, it would drop down like that. So it would set up out of view and flip down when needed. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to use this because the, the inside of the dash and the firewall in this car is completely different. There's a lot more space for a start. So I don't know, I might be able to mount it that way or that way and have it flipped around like this. Basically I don't want it in your way and I want easy access when I do need it. So I may need to make a new one of these but uh, Let's uh, let's go and see what options we have in the car. I didn't do a video of how I made this, but I did do a video of testing it, which I will I will show you up there somewhere. Okay, right. Let's go and see if we've got space for this. Right. Let's see what our options are. So, as I say, this was designed to attach to a firewall, which would have been about there. But in this car, the firewall is another foot further away, which would put the fuse box way back there. Which isn't actually too bad, but I kind of wanted it up there. The other option would be if it sat up there and I kept this hinge situation, and then I could still get access to the fuses up the top through here. That's another possibility. So, uh, let me mull over that and see what I can come up with. But I have to get rid of, I have to get rid of all that nonsense. I've come up with a plan, a solution. So instead of being there, where your feet would go and your your wife's knees, <laughs> how about I install it on the side? And if I, if I attach the hinges to this wall here, then it will it will. I'll show you. It will hinge out this way, so that I've got access if I need to change a fuse without breaking my neck to get underneath. And then when I'm done, it will hinge back into the side. Now obviously, I'll just need to make another plastic cover to go over the top. This will have trim anyway, but the trim will come up to there and then there'll be a sort of similar material to this ABS plastic. I'll make a, a cover for the top that will just clip on. So I think that's what I'm going to do. It doesn't interfere with the legroom and it also means that all the wiring will be channeled the inside of the dash and then down this wall here. And I'll leave a bit of excess wire so that it will allow the hinging to go back and forward. So the only modification required for this is I need to move this hinge down to, down to a bit there. It shouldn't take long. So for the moment I will put these on with some self tappers onto that wall, make sure it swings in and out and then I can put in either uh, threaded inserts or nuts and bolts. Let's see if this is going to work. I think about there. 
right, let's just mark a couple of holes. We'll just do one in each at the moment. access to everything so for install I can have it there and then when when it's done fold it out the way again I'm going to be putting a plastic cover over it but that should work fine okay fun stuff wiring top priority for wiring up today will be the ignition so that I can drive it back into the garage when the rain comes which I think it's going to come later but it's far too hot at the moment so what I'll do is I need to go down to the basement and just clarify if I need to fuse the ignition you know the, the wire going the constant live going to the distributor I don't know if that needs to be fused through a relay or whatever so I'm going to look that up and while we're in the basement we'll do the map of world domination pins at the ready welcome to Scott Rhodes HQ or as my wife likes to call it the basement Right, if you have left a comment with your location, I shall now place you on the map of world domination. Let's go. And that's our update for today. Let's uh, let's see who's winning. I mean, it's it's not a competition, but if it was, the USA would be kicking ass, and Southern Ontario would also be kicking ass. Wow, well, there's a lot of us in there. So we have one way up in Edmonton. That's probably the furthest north. No, actually, no, the UK is further north. In fact, Sweden. Oh, you win. And we have now, we have one in Egypt, uh, black, and I know it's a colour black, but the guy's called black, B-L-A-Q. Now, all you said was Egypt. It's a big place, so I'll put you near the coast, because that seems like a nice place to live. Uh, nothing else in South Africa. Nothing. Nah. Oh, there's one. There's one in Sao Paulo, near Rio. Nothing else in South America. don't think there's anything in Mexico. And Australia and New Zealand are taking over the map. That's a popular coast, eh? Must be nice down there, New Zealand. And uh, obviously Invercargill. I really need to watch the world's fastest Indian again. Great film. Right. Enough nonsense. Right, I spent a while there on the interwebs trying to figure out how you would wire up your ignition through a fuse box. I really just couldn't find anything. I mean, it was easy enough to wire the ignition straight through the key, no problem at all. But when you start entering fuse boxes into it, it gets complicated. So here's what I think. Here's what I think is right. Let's look at the back of this. You have battery. So that's the power coming into the whole key assembly. Okay, that's the power in. Everything else is power out. The one in the centre is your starter motor. So that is only powered when you turn the key all the way to the right. When you let go, that is no longer providing power. Then you've got accessory, which actually works by turning the key to the left, so that you can have the accessories on without 
the engine running and the, the coil if you had one getting burnt out and then as you turn it around again you've got ignition which will always be providing power while the key is in that position you know for your distributor that kind of stuff lights everything I guess I think <laughs> so here's what I'm thinking if I hook up the wire coming from the battery basically after my big red switch straight into the the battery so that's the power in because I'm not sure if I really need a fuse for the the starter motor or the the distributor and if I do I can add a, an inline fuse and then what I'm thinking is probably what I should be doing next is running a, a thick wire from the accessory to the fuse block and then that'll power everything while I'm presuming that that provides power even in the ignition it's the key setting but when you turn the key to the left it only provides power to that but I'm thinking that will always provide power even when it's on the ignition so if I run a solid red wire from accessory to the fuse box and then all my accessories run off the fuse box at that point I think that's the right way to do it I'm going to try it and if that's wrong let me know as soon as possible before my car goes on fire right let's wire something up here's what we have then so that red wire is the battery feed coming in and that will be constant as long as that red key is on the on position. The thick red wire at the top goes to the starter motor. The thick red wire here is attached to accessory on the switch and goes to the fuse panel. And the blue wire is my distributor. And that's the only thing connected to ignition at the moment. So if my theory is correct then everything running through that wire will still be positive even when it's not on the accessory position. I think the point of the accessory position is so that you've got the option of having all the accessories on without all this shenanigans as well. So I guess we stick the key in, stick the red key in, stick this key in, turn it over and see if it starts. Well, if I don't see you again, it's been nice knowing you. Okay, wish me luck. Big red switch on. Try not to touch any of these terminals. Stick the key in. Watch for smoke. So that's the on position. Here we go. Give it some gas, if I can reach. Try again. Right, so far so good. I'll take this red key out at the moment because there's too many live wires at the back of that. Right, next thing I want to test is if we're getting power through to the fuse box from the accessory when it's both at, at the accessory position and when it's at the ignition position. And this should light up. This is plugged into one of the empty uh, fuse terminals and it's just earthed to the body from now. So let us see. I turn it to the left on because I didn't plug in my big red switch. Safety first people. Big red switch on. Key and ignition. Accessory. We have an orange light. So if I turn it to ignition I want to see the orange light again. And we do. So we will try it with it running. Okay, my theory, my theory panned out. Again, take that red, big red switch out before I put this down. Excellent, excellent. 
Well, that's the hard part done. <laughs> I do have a question. Of course I have a question. I always have questions. So the ignition is back in. There's only one wire on each terminal. You turn the key. The fire's up. Great. Okay. And I've got a big solid red wire going to the fuse panel to power everything else when the key is in. Either the ignition or the accessory position. Okay. Now here's a question. Gauges. Okay, they all require power, except the speedo. Well, the speedo requires a light wire, but that's that's all. Everything else requires power, but not a lot of power. Now, I don't want to individually wire these to a fuse. So, is it okay to link all the gauges to one wire to go into one fuse section? As I say, I don't think they, rec they you know, they're not drawing a lot of power, so I don't think it would be a problem with the wiring. But let me know what you guys do still have the rat's nest to figure out but until I've got everything the right length of wire and where it's going to be rooted I can't really do much about that so I'll probably attack that tomorrow main thing is my fuse panels installed looking rather fine I think okay I'll be back at it tomorrow remember leave a comment I haven't really done much wiring before but once you get your head around it I don't think it's that bad so, uh, yeah, tips and fuses, should I put a big massive breaker on the battery wire coming from the battery to that big red switch? Should I put fuses in the ignition, the, the distributor, all that kind of stuff, because I'm really not sure. At the moment, there's no fuses coming from the ignition to anything. It only starts getting fusing, fusing, fused, once it goes into the fuse panel. So, oh, and uh, if you want your name on the map, Make sure you leave a comment where you are and we'll update it on the next one, which we might actually do a live feed for the next one just for fun. Okay, thanks for tuning in. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.